Are you ready for a blast from the past? Don't panic. I'm not about to start this story in 1842, but this was a game released in 2005. Do you remember this? The movies? It was so ambitious and so innovative and was one of those games that people clearly said, how has this never been done before? And I'm now saying, why has this not been done more since? This video is sponsored by, or rather provoked by, a person called Dan, who recently commented on my five-step review of Planet Coaster Console Edition, saying, you ever play the movies? Hope we get something like that again. Running a movie studio. You're damn right I did. And I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. But after that comment, you got me thinking, what happened to the movies? What the hell happened to it? How have we not got another one? Where was the movies too? Hello everybody, I'm Roy McCoy and welcome to my latest video. And this time in What Happened To, we take a look at an incredible game called The Movies. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button as it helps this video to really do well. And if you've got something to say about this or a suggestion for another video, please let's start a conversation down in the comments below. But after those shameless plugs, let's crack on with looking at the movies. Our story today begins in February 2002, when Lionhead Studios began development on the movies. Peter Molyneux, one of the co-founders of Lionhead Studios, apparently came up with the idea one winter morning at 5am and jumped out of bed with the thoughts, why the hell hasn't anyone come up with the idea for a game based on the movies before? Now, if you're not sure who Peter Molyneux is, I'll go into that in a minute, but first let's talk about what The Movies is in a nutshell. The Movies was released in 2005 on the PC and was published by Activision and Sega. It was developed by Lionhead Studios and in 2006 was published on the Mac by Feral Interactive. The game allowed you to run your own Hollywood movie studio, making all different manners of films from 1920s style silent films through to present day and even into the future. Most people love the sense of humour and the theme of the game. And the idea of editing your own movies, basically machinima, which is the use of real-time computer graphics to, to create a cinematic production, was hugely popular. However, the negatives were pointed at things like the micromanagement, particularly in the elements of the stars, dealing with their egos and demands. But all in all, it was pretty well received, and on Metacritic, as of making this video, still stands with a Metascore of 84. When you were making your own little films, you could make decisions relating to things like content, genre, set, actors, costumes, and so much more. And there was even the opportunity to develop your own short promotional trailer. For most people out there, the best part of the game was the ability to create your own movies and the business elements of it just seemed a little bit distracting. Now, I've got to say that I absolutely adored this game. I played this for hours upon hours and as I said at the start, this game was hugely innovative and there was even something called the Movies Online which allowed you to upload your films to share with your friends and show the world what you'd made. So that's what the game is in a nutshell. Now let's track back and talk about Peter Molyneux. Now, sadly, over the years, Peter Molyneux has developed a little bit of a reputation for being a little over-enthusiastic with the descriptions of his games when under development, which then sadly struggled to meet the expectations of the fans. And it has led to the point where Peter Molyneux has stated he will no longer speak to the press. But that aside, he is responsible for some of the greatest games ever made. Things like Populous, Theme Park, Fable, and many of those games nowadays deserve to be on my What Happened To list. Probably the most famous early linking of Peter Molyneux was to Bullfrog Productions, who did bring us those wonderful theme games like Theme Park and Theme Hospital. But the studio itself was acquired by EA in 1995, and just two years later, he decided to leave EA, and after a series of events that apparently led from a night of drinking with his friend Tim Rance, he ended up sending his resignation letter off to EA's CEO. And while he did explain the events around the situation, the submission of a resignation letter caused a crack in the relationship and led to him finally leaving and founding Lionhead Studios in 1997. As I said previously, his first game with the new development studio was Black and White, which was a hugely ambitious and didn't quite deliver. And of course, Lionhead Studios was later responsible for games including the Fable series. And if you wonder why we never got those games on PlayStation, it's because in April 2006, Microsoft Game Studios purchased Lionhead Studios. But this video is not about the history of Peter Molyneux, Lionhead, or even Fable. But what it will do is give you a little bit of backstory as to whether or not we're getting a sequel to the movies. So, as I said, work began on the movies in 2002 after a flash of inspiration by Peter Molyneux. 
he enlisted the help of Adrian Moore, who he'd previously worked with at Bullfrog. And Adrian Moore went on to be the designer of the game. Along with programmer James Brown and a few other people, they managed to turn an early version of the game round to show journalists at the European Computer Trade Show in September 2002 just seven months after initial development. Daniel Pemberton was the composer for the soundtrack of the game, and his work has included Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Ocean's 8, and in the video games world, Little Big Planet and Little Big Planet 2, which led to Computer Games Magazine awarding them the Best Original Music Award in 2005. And as I've said before, the best part of the game was to make the movies themselves. Probably one of the most notable examples of this machinima would be The French Democracy, which was a political film created using the movies in just four days and focused on the 2005 civil unrest in France. The person who made this film was Alex Chan and had no previous filmmaking experience and that is how good this game was. Because it allowed people like us to make films that in real life they might not have the opportunity to do. Mind you, considering a lot of us were still on dial-up back then, can you imagine uploading a film back then? Wow. After the game was released in November 2005, work began on an expansion pack the movie's stunts and effects, which released in June 2006 and was ported over to the Mac once more by Feral Interactive in 2008. This expansion pack included things like stunts and stunt people, new special effects, and allowed you a bit more freedom with your camera. However, most of the criticism levied at it was that it, it took too long to unlock some of the new features. And sadly, since 2006, since that expansion, or 2008 on the Mac, that's been it. So why haven't we seen anything about this game in the last 14 years, and could we ever see another one? Well, while the game was innovative and interesting and received really good scores from the critics, sadly, in terms of sales, the game didn't deliver. And that is what it comes down to. It sold pretty poorly, and even though it won awards, for example, it won the Best Simulation Award at the 2006 BAFTA Video Games Awards. This game just didn't hit the ground running in terms of sales. And possibly one of the things that I think actually hampered the game is this isometric top-down view where you're kind of manipulating and moving, which is really sad because this game went above and beyond to do something new and innovative. But at the end of the day, when a game doesn't sell well, a game doesn't sell well and a sequel is unlikely. After this, that was their last new IP, and Lionhead just focused on sequels and spin-offs to the Fable series. After the completion of the game Fable The Journey in 2002, Peter Molyneux left the studio that had previously been purchased by Microsoft and went his own way to open a new studio, 22 Cans, that has most notably worked on the early access version of Goddess. Lionhead Studios sadly since then has been closed down, and in 2016 Microsoft called time on the studio that brought us Fable, Black and White, and of course, the movies. So, one thing's for sure at this point, we can say that because it no longer exists, it won't be Lionhead Studios that's bringing it our way. And it's also wise to assume that Microsoft still own the rights to the movies. The website is gone where you could upload your films to, and pretty much it's difficult these days too many references to it. Even typing the movies into the internet or the movies the game usually gives you articles about 10 video games that need to be made into movies or why video games make such bad movies. So we know why we haven't seen a sequel. It didn't sell well and the studio has since been closed down but could we ever see one again? Well I'm gonna say no but I'm gonna hedge a little bit here because I'm gonna say the movies itself I think is gone. Its time is over. I can't imagine a sequel to it being made but the theme itself, the idea and the engine behind the game then yeah Yes, I could totally see something being done as grandiose as this. Now, with YouTube these days, it would make it a lot easier for a studio to produce a game that allowed someone to make a movie and upload it onto the platform. And I think with the popularity of YouTube, it's only a matter of time before someone makes another game like this. Now, hopefully, in my opinion, it would scale back on the business simulation elements of it, the micromanagement and just allow people to make machinima films. But I'd kind of also like to see a little bit of your studio creation and a research development tree. I'm happy to have some elements of business simulation, but not too much. I don't need to deal with every ego. I mean, is that what Hollywood's really like? I don't know. But so, to sum up, this video game was an absolute innovative and ambitious classic that sadly never got a sequel. And while there are plenty of games out there at the moment, 
that allow you to do business management, things like The Great Two Point Hospital and of course Planet Coaster. In terms of filmmaking, there's things like Filmmaker Tycoon and Anime Studio Tycoon. But nothing as of yet has reached the heights of the movies. So I imagine somewhere down the line, someone will allow us, maybe with the graphics of something like Two Point Hospital, to make a game like this. That's my hope. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would like to see. But from me today, this is Roy McCoy, out!